Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Magic Pinecone, an original story written for you by friend of the podcast, Lexi Donahue. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Magic Pinecone Spitha skidded down the hall and into the kitchen. She slid straight under the table and popped out in time to vault over the couch. She always tried to get ready as fast as possible. If only she had the coordination to land her feet directly in her shoes. That would be epic and efficient. Spith, slow down! You barrel downstairs like the house is on fire, and you rile up the cat. Her mom handed her a muffin, which she jammed into her mouth in a single bite. Did you remember to feed Lumi this morning? Spitha yanked on her shoes and held her hands up near her face. Mom, toss me a can. I feed Lumi outside every morning and I have for all seven months she's lived with us. That's where she likes it. Mom shook her head. My outdoorsman. A smile tickled the edges of her lips as she tossed a can. Spitha slipped out the door, Lumi weaving between her legs as she set the can in the grass. The dew sparkled in the sun, and Lumi pounced after the flitting wings of a moth. Spitha popped the can open, and Lumi let out a meow. The cat licked at the can, and Spitha ran her fingers along the cat's back, giving extra scratches right before her tail. Nice and normal day, she murmured to the cat. But of course, it was not just a normal day. All at once, she remembered that it was Lumi's birthday and her surprise party was after school. Spitha wanted to make sure Lumi had the best birthday ever. As Lumi licked the last morsel of food from the can, Spitha jumped to her feet, ready to stroll through the woods behind her house until school. Lumi decided to follow her that day, and they went into the trees together, breathing in the earthy smells. Spitha paused to admire a patch of moss that seemed to have grown overnight. Lumi rubbed against the moss, purring. Just as Spitha leaned down to examine the underside of the moss, something wrestled in the branches above them. A small creature tumbled from the tree. It flipped down and tickled the tops of Spitha's toes as it flitted by. Ah! Spitha yelped as she jumped away. But Lumi couldn't resist a good chase, and she took off after the creature. Spitha rushed to keep up with her, But Lumi was too fast, and the critter was even faster. Spitha made it around the curve in the path just in time to see Lumi chase the squirrel into a hole in a tree. There was a meowing and a yowing and a muttering and a stuttering, and then a great ba-bang with a flash of light. The creature staggered out, a cat scratch across its face. It was like a tiny fairy, except... Spitha had never heard of a fairy so ugly, with big wrinkly features and a smile like a witch. Before Spitha could even process what she was seeing, before she could be sure she was even seeing it at all, the creature disappeared, leaving a crooked mushroom in its place. A second later, Spitha was blinded by a blast of water. Wiping her eyes dry, she saw Lumi come crawling and bawling out of the tree. The fairy, or whatever it was, had worked some kind of magic on the cat because there was a glowing pine cone stuck to her tail, and it was spraying water like a sprinkler. Lumi hissed as the water rained down. In her state of pure panic, the cat sprinted back past the rock, past the moss, and then to the yard. Spitha couldn't keep up, but she followed claw marks and paw prints and darkened wet patches of ground out of the woods. She stared in horror at her father's freshly shredded garden beds. There was no hint of Lumi anywhere. Spitha gulped. Her dad was going to be mad. She glanced towards the house to see if anyone else had seen, just as her mother called, Spitha, time for school. But Lumi ran, Spitha tried to explain to her mother. I will not put up with a single one of your excuses, always looking for a reason to stay in the woods on a sunny day. Her mother pointed at the path that led to school. 
Spitha sagged, knowing it was useless to argue. She obediently grabbed her backpack and headed off to school. She thankfully didn't see Lumi on the road or in the yards or anywhere else. There was no hint of Lumi again until her teacher was taking attendance. I can't wait for the party, whispered Spitha's friend Mark at his desk nearby. I caught a huge fish for her. Spitha had invited her entire class to Lumi's party. After all, a party wasn't a party without friends. A fish? Spitha raised an eyebrow. We don't have a fish tank. No, it's to eat, silly, Mark said. Does Lumi know about her party? Spitha shook her head. I don't think so. Although, maybe it would have been better to try to tell her. Something weird happened this morning. Psst, Spitha's friend Tracy hissed. She pointed at the window. Something weird is happening now. The three of them looked out the window. Lumi was there in all her glory. She sped wildly around the schoolyard, leaving a trail of dripping grass and claw marks behind her. What in the... Mark squinted. Tracy tried to peer closer. What is on her tail? Is that a pine cone? Oh, good heavens! Mrs. Hart strode over to the curtain and lowered it. It's like the wildlife around here are opposed to children learning. How am I supposed to get to any of today's lessons if you're too distracted to say here when I call your name? Spitha glanced from her teacher to her friends to the window. Um, Mrs. Hart? Just say here, Spitha, we're late for art class. Here, Spitha said dejectedly. As the class lined up for art, Spitha tried to peek under the curtain, but she couldn't see anything from the corner she lifted. She ran to catch up to the end of the line just as it exited the door. To her surprise, Mrs. Hart led the class away from the art room and towards the front door. Mr. Porter wanted to have art class outside today, said Mrs. Hart. Then she whispered under her breath, Hopefully he doesn't mind distractions. Mr. Porter was a very easygoing man with a round belly and rosy red cheeks. Spitha couldn't imagine he could be upset by much, but then again, Mr. Porter had never taught a class outside while a maniac of a cat darted out of nowhere spraying water from a magic pine cone. All right, class, Mr. Porter greeted them. Grab a smock and sit in front of an easel. Mark motioned for Spitha to sit next to him. Tracy was on his other side. Spitha pulled a smock over her head. <laughs> Tracy pointed at Spitha's smock. You got the smock I used last time. How do you know? Spitha looked down. In bright red letters on the bottom right side of her smock were the words, Tracy was here. Spitha rolled her eyes. Very mature. Tracy grinned. You're just jealous you didn't think of it first. So what's wrong with Lumi? Spitha looked at the calm lawn and occasional tree in the schoolyard. Lumi wasn't in sight. I'm not really sure, Spitha said. So... She went on to tell the story of the ugly fairy in the woods that morning. Sounds like Lumi riled up the wrong kind of fairy, Mark said. He must have played a prank on her to get even. Poor Lumi, said Tracy. Cats hate water. No wonder she's losing her mind. Mr. Porter cleared his throat. All right, class, as you can see, you are seated around this tree. Mr. Porter paced slowly around the group as he spoke. The magnificent thing about art is that no two artists will paint the same object the same way. Today, we are going to paint this tree. Not only should you paint it in whatever style speaks to you, but you're also seated so that you have a unique vantage point. No one is seeing the exact same part of the tree as you are. And such is life. No two experiences, no two people are ever the same. But we can still try to understand each other now, can't we? Mr. Porter was always going on like this, preaching about life and individuality and such. It annoyed some kids, but Spitha liked it. Mr. Porter made her feel special. He made her feel like everyone was special. 
Some kids had already started painting by the time Mr. Porter ended with, Show us life from your lens. Spitha picked up her paintbrush and dabbed at the white, swirling a bit of blue into it. Mr. Porter is the best. Mark leaned forward to add more black to his canvas. He was painting the tree in all blacks, whites, and grays. Wow, cool, Mark. Spitha admired his canvas another moment before turning back to her own. She lifted her brush to put her first stroke of paint on her blank canvas, but a streak of movement from above interrupted her concentration. Wow! Lumi free fell from the branch above them and landed on Tracy's head. Tracy grimaced as Lumi pushed off and landed directly into Mark's paint tray. Black and gray spattered all over his tree painting, his shirt, and his face. Kids started to scream. Spitha didn't have time to try to help. She watched in horror as Lumi leapt from easel to easel, water shooting left, right, and diagonal. Paint and fur and water covered clothes, grass, and the tree. A riot of liquid color filled the air and Mr. Porter waved his arms wildly. Lumi, still frantic to escape the magic pine cone stuck to her tail, rolled and scooted her butt along the ground. Then, when nothing worked, she decided to try out running again and took off away from the school at a panther sprint. The class sat in silence, the kids wiping their faces, staring in misery at their paintings, and then turned to look for guidance from Mr. Porter. For a moment, Mr. Porter stood motionless, blue paint dripping from his left eyebrow down to his cheek. Then he started to laugh. One by one, the entire class joined in. Finally, when everyone had gotten the laughter out of their system, Mr. Porter passed out paper towels. Just do your best to clean up. The paint is non-toxic, but be sure to get it off your face the best you can. Mr. Porter, Mark asked, what should we do about our tree paintings? Spitha held her breath. Would he assign a redo project for homework? She wouldn't have time with the party. Ah, he raised his hands and gestured at the paintings. Never in a million years would we be able to recreate such paintings as we have here. The movement, the energy, and the splatters, it's pure genius, really. I wish I had thought of it myself. And with that, Mr. Porter directed the class to pack up the easels and carry them back into the art room. All the other kids folded up easels, tucked canvases under their arms, and marched towards the school, but not Spitha. Psst, Tracy, Spitha hissed. Tracy looked around, eyebrows furrowed. She met Spitha's eyes and laughed. <laughs> You've got blue paint right between your eyes. Spitha rubbed it off as she stepped closer to her friend. Can you take my stuff? Um, sure, I guess I can manage that. Tracy tucked the second canvas against her own. Maybe Mark can take your easel. Yeah, thanks. Spitha balanced the easel against Tracy's leg and rushed off. She felt kind of bad at leaving her friend stuck with all her stuff like that, but she had to help her cat. She took off across the lawn towards the bushes. Lumi, Spitha called out in a sing-song voice. Where are you, kitty? Meow, came from a bush further ahead. Spitha rushed over. Spiky thorns covered the bush. She knew it was one of the rose bushes last year's fifth grade class had donated to the school. They were big and red and sharp. Meow. Spitha took a breath, stuck her arms into the bush, and caught her cat with both hands. Okay, Lumi, you're okay. Despite her scratched arms, Spitha freed her cat from the bush. With Lumi against her, Spitha could feel all the cat's muscles rigid. Even her tail was still. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not getting wet. Spitha looked closer at Lumi's tail. It was very clearly a pine cone strung on her tail, like a bead on a necklace. Spitha couldn't tell how it was attached to her fur. Not knowing what else to do, Spitha looked at Lumi. Sorry, girl. I gotta get you inside and safe. We can work on getting that thing off once we're home. Spitha tried to hide Lumi with her arms as she hurried back towards the door her class had entered through, but it was locked. She squinted at the door, 
trying to figure out how to get the secretary to agree to unlock it, when Tracy poked out her head. Spitha let out a sigh of relief. She really had the best friends. The door inched open and Spitha pulled it the rest of the way to hurry through. I'm so glad you're here, she whispered. Mark and Tracy stared in horror at Lumi. Uh, glad to see you didn't run away, Mark trailed off. And what Mark means to say is, but what in tarnation are you thinking bringing a cat to school? Tracy said. Tell you later, Spitha said before running to her locker. She hoisted Lumi under one arm, yanked her backpack off the faded silver hook, and shoved her locker closed. In one swift move, Spitha had lowered Lumi into the backpack and zipped it up. Then she unzipped it just an inch. I gotta give her air to breathe, right? She asked. Yeah, good idea, Mark trailed off again. And what Mark really means to say is, bringing an actual real-life cat to school is the worst idea you've ever had in your entire life. Tracy clarified again. At 10.02, Spitha sat in the third row of Miss Thorner's math class. At 10.03, she tucked her backpack under her chair, hoping that between the chair and the wall behind her, Lumi would feel like she couldn't escape the bag. At 10.05, Spitha felt a jet of water hit her leg. The droplet slid down her calf and the rim of her sock absorbed it. She squeezed her eyes closed. Spitha, you look like you're a little confused, Miss Thorner probed. Spitha popped her eyes open. No, no, I'm fine, Miss Thorner. Oh, good. Miss Thorner turned and wrote the next equation on the board. How about you come up and solve this one? Don't worry. If you get stuck or make a mistake, we will help you. So at 10.06, Spitha slid out of her chair, walked up to the board with clenched fists, and tried with all her might to listen for a loose cat behind her. And at 10.06 and 37 seconds, water splattered across the room. A kid screamed, Monster! The entire class ducked and crouched behind chairs, desks, and each other. They held up books, notebooks, and folders trying to block the spray. Lumi was jumping and dodging and barreling all over, the magic pinecone jetting water. The cat made a final zigzagging attempt to get out of the room and finally honed in on the door. Mark, Tracy, and Spitha began to flail and panic as Lumi darted into the hall. The cat's nails scraped and splayed out left and right and diagonal as she scratched and skittered along the school's tile floor. The door to the office flew open on the right and the kids scrambled after Lumi as she turned and leapt straight into the doorway of the main office. The main office of West Elementary is one of the most organized places Spitha had ever seen. The pens were labeled, the papers were aligned neatly into hanging folders, and the mailboxes were organized by grade and alphabetical order. Unfortunately, the amount of paper and electronics in the main office made it 110% unprepared for a water-cursed cat. Lumi flew over the secretary's head and through the doorway, soaking every piece of paper and leaving the room looking like a hurricane had just come to stay. The cat was off a second later and bolted straight down towards a room at the end of the hall. The cafeteria. The cat disappeared through the doors and the crowd inside fell into a stunned silence. When Spitha caught up a second later, she froze. There was food dripping from the ceiling, puddles of orange juice and milk, and a burger patty slid down one kid's forehead. Then the entire cafeteria erupted in screams and pandemonium. Spitha, Tracy, and Mark ducked around and under, weaving between people and tables. None of them saw Lumi, not until she was gripping the top of Mr. Roos's bald head. The teacher made a grab for her, but she dug her claws in deeper, so he was forced to freeze with the cat perched on his shiny dome. Whose? He huffed and shook. Cat! He gulped. Is this? His narrowed eyes scanned the group. Then he lifted an arm and pointed right at Spitha. You! Spitha slowly approached Mr. Roos, arms outstretched. She wondered why the pinecone wasn't squirting water now. 
Sorry, Mr. Roos. Cat outside now. Spitha nodded and ushered Lumi outside. The cat knew her way home, and the water wasn't spraying, so Spitha thought she'd get home just fine. It was just a matter of when. Spitha worried that Lumi wouldn't show up to her own party. She worried throughout the rest of the school day. She worried when she got her detention slip, and she worried all through detention. She worried on her walk home, and she worried as she hung up ribbon and stacked presents. She worried while she poured snacks into bowls and hung up the Catch the Feather game. She worried as she set the cake onto the table, and she especially worried when all the guests arrived. Sorry, everyone, she said finally, sadly. I guess Lumi took the long way home today. We'll have to start the party without the birthday girl. Right as she said it, Lumi appeared out of nowhere and leapt into her birthday cake. It smashed into furry pieces and sprayed Spitha and all her guests with frosting bits. Everyone looked to Spitha, who laughed so hard she started crying, causing everyone else to join in. Lumi's backside shook as Spitha approached the frosting-covered cat. Let me see, Lumi, Spitha said. She held Lumi still and reached for the pine cone. It wasn't glowing at all now, and it slid off Lumi's tail easily. The pine cone was brown and gray and dirty. It had pointy cone scales and a hole right through the center. Spitha slipped the pine cone onto her necklace, looked up at her confused guests, and then focused on her cat. Happy birthday, Lumi. Meow, Lumi said happily. And then they put some candles on what was left of the cake and sang happy birthday to the crazy little cat who had caused so much trouble. The End Thanks for listening!